see. Okay. We'll see if that works. Okay. Okay. I want to tell you a story. I was a servant in the household of the king during the time of Belteshazzar. And you have been reading the story of the man named Daniel, who was one of the exiles of Judah that came to live there. Now, the king, you heard about that. The king wanted all these people that were good-looking and of noble birth that could be leaders in the kingdom. And I would listen in on what was going on because people don't pay a lot of attention to servants, right? They just are there. I don't know if anybody's been to one of your modern-day restaurants. How many of you know your names or your waitresses when you go there? That's kind of what I was like. So anyway, I had been there during, during the time of King Nebuchadnezzar when he did all of these decrees, wanting people to interpret his dreams. And you've heard about that dream about the, the, giant, the giant image that was made and and the head of gold, and then the chest of bronze, the chest and arms of bronze. Well, and then you, you heard about how um, King Nebuchadnezzar co often called Daniel to him to give interpretations, because Daniel was in touch with God, the real God. Now, we had many gods, just as I know that you do today. I've heard how you have many, many gods. Today, you might not name them as gods, but sometimes they're the, the god of the insurance card or the god of the, the, um, of the money that's in your pocket or the god of the credit card or the god of promoting yourself or the god of whatever it might be. I think somebody used to talk about Oprah a lot. I think I've heard about an Oprah person. But anyway, get back to the story. So King Nebuchadnezzar had heard over and over and over about the Most High God, but it was hard in our culture to understand only one God because there has to be many gods to take care of many things because there's many needs, right? So there was often many gods that we had, but he'd hear about this Most High God. And then you heard recently about the time in which Nebuchadnezzar, had king, our king, had finally had heard over and over and over again, and then he had been told that if he didn't acknowledge the most high God, the true God, then he would be like a beast in the field. And um, he, he was. I mean, the household was a buzz, as we didn't know what to do with the fact that King Nebuchadnezzar was crawling around on the ground out in the field, and we needed to make sure that there was a king in Babylon. Well, he came back, and he wrote a lot of the words that you read last week and, and, and acknowledged the Most High God. But then after he died, there was this series of kings. And I want to tell you a bit about these kings that came along. So there was evil Merodach, and he, he was the one that let, um, let Jehoiachin, who was a, a Jewish um, exile, the king, he eat at his table. But conspirators came, and they put him to death after two years. There's a lot of stuff going on, on in the castle at this time. And then there was Nergesur. He's the brother-in-law of um, King Evil Merodach. And he was one of the conspirators. He was, he was there for four years. He was killed in battle. And then there was Labrasworth, who um, was beaten to death only less than a year. He was only there for less than a year as a king. And then there was Nabalmistus. And he's the son-in-law of King Nebuchadnezzar, who married the widow of Negeslesher, and um, so, you know, he wants to become king. So he was the king, and then he actually would go off for a while, you know, he just wanted to be king, and he left his son, the crown prince Bel Belshazzar, in charge. I want to tell you about Belshazzar's name. Belteshazzar is actually a female name that means lady protect the king, and it's like the wife of Baal, who was one of our gods, and, but Belshazzar means Baal, protect the king, or the prince of Bel. So Belshazzar was the king when all of this happened. Now, when what happens, I want to just read you what happened. I'll just read it from your word here. King Belshazzar made a great peace, feast for a thousand of his lords and drank wine in front of the household. Belshazzar, when he had tasted the wine, 
commanded that the vessels of gold and silver that Nebuchadnezzar, his father, so his father, so it's his grandfather, it's like he's a descendant, um, his father had taken out of the temple of Jerusalem. He had brought that the king and the, his lords, his wives, and his concubines might drink for them. This is not a good thing. As I'm watching this happen, I'm thinking, this is not a good thing. Because these are, the te- these are sacred objects from the temple of the Most High God. And I've started to recognize that this was the Most High God. And King Nebuchadnezzar had realized this. And here he is taking the gold, the gold goblets that had been taken out of the temple of the Most High God and having them brought to his table to drink. So I'm going to go back to your word here. Then they brought the golden vessels that had been taken out of the temple, the house of the God in Jerusalem, and the king, of the, and, the king and his lords, his wives, and his concubines drank from them. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and silver, bronze, iron, wood, and stone. So what they were doing was they took these beautiful objects that had come out of the temple, and they were mocking the God of the Judah, the, the people from Judah. They were mocking the Most High God by, by drinking from these, to the, and they were praising their gods, the gods of gold and silver and bronze and iron and wood and stone, with the objects of the Most High God that were dedicated for him. And then, you know, you talk about scary things. What happened? It was amazing. Then immediately, it says, immediately the fingers of a human hand appeared and wrote in the plaster of the wall in the king's palace opposite the lampstand. It was amazing. It was so scary. It was so frightening to see this happening. This hand just comes and writes in the wall. And the king saw it, and you should have seen his face. Then the king saw the hand and it, when it wrote, and the king's color changed. And, his, and, I, and it says here, his thoughts alarmed him. And boy, they did. You should have seen his face. His thoughts alarmed him, and his limbs gave way, and his knees knocked together. He was so shaken when this happened. And then the king, and then the king called loudly to bring in the enchanters, the Chaldeans, the astrologers. He wanted all those people that were his advisors to come. And the king declared to the wise men of Babylon, Whoever reads this writing and shows me its interpretation shall be clothed with purple and have a chain of gold around his neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. So he's wanting them to tell him what it said. Then all the king's wise men came in and they couldn't read the writing or make it known to the king the interpretation. He, and the king was greatly alarmed and his color changed and his lords were perplexed. Now the queen... Now, the queen was like the queen's mother or queen grandmother. I mean, the, the king's mother or grandmother. So she, the, the queen came in because of the words of the king and his lords and came to the banqueting hall and, the, and declared, she told him, she knew, the queen had seen. The queen had seen what Daniel could do. O oh, king, live forever. Let not your thoughts alarm you or your color change. There is a man in your kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy God. So she knew how to talk to him. She knew how to talk to him. And she says, there is a man. There is a man who knows, who, can, who has the spirit of the holy gods in him. And so he, she, you need to call him. It said, she said, in the days of your father, the, the light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of God, were found in him. And King Nebuchadnezzar, your father, your father the king, made him the chief of magicians, enchanters, Chaldeans, astrologers, because of an excellent spirit, knowledge and understanding, to interpret dreams and explain riddles and solve problems was found in this Daniel, whom king named Belteshazzar. So let Daniel be called, and he will show the interpretation. And so what was so wonderful about Daniel, what was so wonderful about him, is he wasn't like trying to force his faith on us. He just lived it. He, he lived it and we saw it. We recognized it. And so, so she's, she mentioned it, that he, you know, he's got the spirit of the holy gods and, he, and, and he's good for, for interpreting dreams and he's got an excellent spirit. He loves us. He wants to take care of us. He, he, we, we saw that in him. 
And then what happened, they, did into, they called Daniel in. It says, Daniel was brought in before the king, and the king answered and asked, you are that Daniel, one of the exiles of Judah. So he was still trying to put him down, like, we brought you here. You're one of those exiles. You're that person we've heard about. You're one of those exiles whom my fa- my, the king my father brought out from Judah, and I have heard that you have the spirit of God in you and that a light and an understanding and excellent wisdom are found on you. Now the wise men, the enchanters, have been brought in before me to read this writing and make known to me its interpretation, but they could not show the interpretation or matter. But I have heard that you can give the interpretation and solve problems. Now if you can read the writing and make known to me its interpretation, you shall be clothed with purple and have a chain of gold around your neck and, it, and you shall be the third ruler of the kingdom. Now, you know, I'm going to tell you the truth. I heard him say all these things, and I'm thinking, Daniel really doesn't care about all those things. I've watched Daniel over the last number of years. He really doesn't care about all those things. You're trying to bribe him, but he'll probably tell you the interpretation anyway. And then Daniel answered and said before the king, let your gifts be for yourself and give your rewards to another Nevertheless, I will read the writing to the king and make known to him the interpretation. O king, the most high God gave Nebuchadnezzar, your father, kingship and greatness and glory and majesty, and because of the greatness that he gave gave him, all people, nations, and languages trembled and feared before him. Whom he would, he killed, and whom he would, he kept alive. Whom he would, he raised up, and whom he would, he humbled. But when his heart was lifted up and his spirit was hardened so that he dealt proudly, he was brought down from his kingly throne and his glory was taken from him. He was driven from among the children of mankind and his mind was made like that of a beast and his dwelling was with the wild donkeys and he was fed grass like an ox and his body was wet with the dew of heaven until he knew that the most high God rules over the kingdom of mankind and sets over it whom he he will. Now, I'm listening to him telling Belshazzar this, and I'm thinking, he knows this. He's heard this story before. He's heard this, but Daniel did a great job of just just summarizing the whole history there as he tells King Belshazzar. But then he says, and you, his son, Belshazzar, have not humbled your heart, though you knew all this, but you have lifted yourself up against the God, the Lord of heaven. And the vessels of his house have been brought in before you, and you and your lords, your wives, and your concubines have drank wine from them, and you have praised the gods of gold, of bronze, of silver, and wood, and stone, which do not see or hear or know. But the God in whose hand is in in your breath, and and whose all of your ways have not honored. So he finished that, and then this is what happened. It says, then from his presence the hand was sent, and his writing was inscribed. And this is the writing that was inscribed. Mene, mene, telke, and tarsan. And the interpretation of the matter is this. This is what's going to happen, O king, he tells them. God has numbered the days of your kingdom and brought it to an end. Mene. I heard that, and I was scared, honestly. I didn't know it was going to happen. Tekel, you have been weighed in the balances and found wanting. Perish, your kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Then Belshazzar gave the command, and Daniel was clothed with purple, and a chain of gold was put around his neck, and a proclamation was made that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. And I tell you, as I listened to this, I thought, again, Daniel doesn't care about that. And what is really going to happen? And do you know what happened? It's in your word. That very night, Belshazzar, the Chaldean king, was killed. And Darius the Mede received the kingdom. He was about 62 years old. And do you know why, how that happened? We were protected. We thought we were protected, or at least the kings thought we were protected. We were a massive nation. We were huge. We, we had, I just want to make sure that I know here, Babylon in the kingdom was for, huge for us. It was 15 miles on either side. The walls were 87 feet thick and 350 feet tall. 
There were 250 towers to watch. There was military. We had thick bronze gates blocking the entrance by, that came in through the Euphrates River. We were protected, so we were cocky. And the kings thought that we ha they had it all together. They thought that we, they were just fine behind these giant thick walls with all of the military and the giant bronze gates, but they were not paying attention. And there were these people that were coming that wanted the kingdom, and they had been prophesied about by Daniel a long time ago. The Medes and the Persians. And they wanted to take over. So what they did, they rerouted the Euphrates River right under our noses. They dug a channel and moved the river. And well, my, our king is over there mocking the God of heaven, the most holy of gods. The army was sneaking under the gates in the Euphrates River because they'd rerouted it. And then that kingdom of bronze came into being. And eventually Cyrus, the one that would make the decree that would let the, the, the exiles go back home, became king. He was the Persian that was there in charge of the troops that were digging miles and miles and miles to divert that river. And Babylon fell. because our king was not paying attention. So I wonder today how you were all paying attention. Are, are you paying attention to the most high God? To the God who came and showed us in Babylon himself? The God who who loved even those who took his people into exile? Are you paying attention? And as you are paying attention, are you living a life maybe like Daniel, who loves the people even if they are really mixed up, even as they might consult the psychic on one moment and go to church on the other moment? even as they might serve many gods, are you paying attention? Do you know that there will be a day when, when that God will return? I think you're celebrating it pretty soon with a, a time of Advent, remembering that he will return because he is the most high king. And I, and I know that many of you are worried and concerned about what might happen in your country with the the new king. I watched many kings come and go in my time in Babylon. But I realized as I watched Daniel, this man who was brought in as an exile who couldn't even be in his kingdom, as I watched him live a life of faith, that his God carried him. I hope you're paying attention to that God and that you're remembering that that God will carry you. And I thank you. I thank you for the time to come to share with you the story of that incredible night, which was oh so scary, but oh so wonderful, as many of us started to realize that there are not many gods there is one God, the Most High God, the God of Daniel, and the God that you now have heard has seen his son come to forgive all of your sins. God, we thank you. We praise you. We praise you that you prophesied long before Babylon fell, that you were going to raise up a king named Cyrus, that you proved yourself as a God who knows the future, 
because you hold the world in your hands. We thank you that you came for us and for the gift of being able to draw closer and closer to you and to pay attention to what you're doing. We ask you to help us. Help us to stop, to listen, to be present with you, with those around us, and to remember that you are the Most High God. In Jesus' name, amen.